So pick whatever you want. So also in this file, we can alter the font size and color of that main, what they call the header title. So let's go to our page, to our supermon.css file and scroll down to header title. And you can compare it with the one in the guide so that you know that you're in the right place. So this is header title, position absolute, three picks, five picks. Yes, we're in the same place. So we wanted to make this bigger or smaller. We'll change that font size to 1.0 and we'll come down just a little bit further to these two areas. And for some reason, I had to change them both to make the color change. I don't know why any of you CSS folks out there that are very versed in this syntax, please correct me and we'll fix it. So let's uh, change them both to red from aquamarine or medium aquamarine. We change it to red, hit save, upload it to the node, and then we'll come here and refresh the page. And the font size changed and the color of the font changed. Now, this section lets you customize the very next. It's called the header tag. It's called the header tag, which is this area. And you can even change the font style. Now, for some reason, it's got to be the font family along with the font name and monospace. So I haven't deviated from this too much because it's just different. But you can go to CSS fonts and work out those family names and font names. Now this section right here only shows up when it's logged in. It's where it says All Star Link Control Center, which is right here, All Star Link Echo Link Bridging Center. I changed the other one to Control Center, but and you can't see it here, but when you log out, it goes away. It's, it's not there anymore, so it's only present when it's logged in page refreshes and it's back. It's just in black right now, so it's not easy to see. So now you can come down and start other customizations as in to change the color of the menu font. You can go to menu A and let's just try that out real quick. And you'll notice in here there's a menu or a header two tag, header three tag, header four tag. Yeah, I don't know what it's referring to there yet. But I'm come down to the menu A display block, padding, all that good stuff. You see where the color is black and we change that to yellow and save it upload it back to the node and refresh the page you'll see here that our menu text color changed you can even change you can even change the background of the menu items and this is a particularly little tedious area, but it's not too bad. So let's go to the menu UL. We see it's different from this a little bit because we've centered the page. This is a line style type none, but this is the same line. So where it says background color is red, we have light sea green, so we could change it to red. As long as we type it in right, and that is very important. Hit save upload to the node, refresh the page. And see there, our menu, this is just our menu, not our menu bar or the border. That's just the menu. So how do we make it all match, you ask? Well, there is a way. But also, not only can you change the color of that background area, you can also change menu items, etc. But we want to go to menu right above menu A. Position is relative, yada yada. So there's the light sea green. We're going to change it to red. Save it. Upload it. Refresh it. And boom, now the whole thing matches. Now, I know these color schemes may not be appealing, but these are just examples where I'm helping you through the guide. Here you can change the drop down menus title. So this particular drop down menu has a title for all nodes. When you click that, it takes you to all nodes or you can just select these nodes and go one at a time. Like just 57780 or just 1969. 
but it's some kind of click through change. And now you can do the drop down menu items font color, like the font itself. So we can go to menu, drop down content, menu, drop down content A. Current color is red. We could change that to green. Save. Upload. Refresh. And now you can see those items are green. You can even change the background color here from black to whatever you want. Or the hover color. See how that we're hovering over it is still black, but we could change that color as well here. If you wanted it maroon or whatever. So here's the drop down menu font color. Let's go to menu, drop down content. Instead of black, we could change that to white if we wanted to. Save, upload, refresh, and now that's background is white, which is not conducive for the others, but you get what I'm going for here. And you see the hover color is black. You can change that as well. There's so many different customizations you can do, and this guide points out a lot of them. So just read it through. But when you're scrolling down and you get to this section that says, if you downloaded and replaced the supermon.css file from my GitHub page, then you can skip this section because we've already done it. And it's a pretty big section. I included it just in case you didn't want to use my file. And here's just some more customization areas. You can even change the table grid color. Now, here's where you go to change that header file. So, once you're in here, you hit configuration header. We can go to global.inc. And you've seen where we change those pixels to change that header height. But right here where it says background.jpg, that's the file it uses to display up here. It's not the background of the whole page. It's the background of the header. So you can see inside of my Supermon directory here that I have a file called 57788header3. Now it needs to be updated because my node never changed, but I'm doing this as an example. So this is a picture that I made in Canva. This is a file, a graphic that I made in Canva. You see I left some space over here for the Supermon page to load information. And I can't remember... But I'm pretty sure this is around 2000 by 415. You can try a bunch of different ones because it's very dynamic. You're going to have to play with it a little bit. But if I go into the configuration editor and edit the global.inc and I change this background.jpg to that other file name that I already have in there, I can write that edit, return to the index, close this window, and refresh. And you can see my background image has changed for the header. But it's kind of cut off, so you've got to play with it a little bit to get that pixel size just right. So we had it 200, let's try 250. And you can see it's coming down a little bit, but I think I want it just a little bit more. Just a little larger. So let's try 280. Oh look, there's some more text that I had hidden there at the bottom. So I'm thinking I've got a smidgen it just a tad more. Let's just go to 300. And that looks a lot cleaner, doesn't it? You can also go in here and get the all-star link file. It's called allstarlink.jpg. You need to leave it the same dimensions that it already is, but uh, you can alter it. You can change it to something else altogether, or you could do what I did. If you want, you don't have to do this, but I took it and I put the number three on it because it's version all-star link three on that particular node. You can do a lot of different things here. And now you've got a node with a custom graphic, custom colors, everything is centered, bada bing, bada boom. You've got a pretty neat deal here. And this guide will point you in the direction for a lot of that. And at the very bottom is those areas of link.php to change to get everything centered and the information about All -Star Link, the All Star Link JPG file so you can customize it as well. Okay, so I reverted back just a little bit so that I can point out a few customizations as well with the node grid table. If you use my supermon.css file, initially it will look like this and then you'll have to make the modification in the 
guide to center these items here. But these are the default colors if you use my file. So how do you change those? Well, they're defined in the guide. Took a lot of work, but they usually start right after this little area if you want to manually center your grid tables. These are the instructions here on how to do that. But what if you want to customize it? You don't want to use my colors, of course. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But there's a bunch of steps here on different items in the table that you can modify. So if we open that supermon.css file and view edit and make the text bigger. We can jump down. Let's just say, for example, this area here in red, I call it the grid table header, but they call it a table dot grid table th. That's the stanza that we want to go down to. table dot grid table dot th. And as it points out here, and we're going to use this as an example, the border color is white. And currently it's black, but in this example it's white because I made the background black. Yes. Uh, you can see here that the border style is solid, the border color is black, and we could, you know, we could actually change that to red. But you see a light sea green here, but in the picture you see numbers because you can either use a name here or the HTML color code. Let's say we want to make the background this color of green right here. We take this code, copy it, change that light sea green to this, and we don't want that space. We want that semicolon to be right up against it. And we've changed that border color to red. Currently, our page looks like this. Background color of the sea green and a border color of black. Take that file that we just changed, save it, upload it back to the All-Star node, go back to our Supermon page and refresh. People find it far easier to forgive others for being wrong than being right. You can see our border color changed, but our background color did not. And maybe that has to be changed here. I realized that I picked a very light color, so let's go with something that's actually different. Maybe a burnt orange. Get that extra pound sign out of there. All right, and we'll save that. Upload it back. And refresh the page. And you can see that background color changed. That border color is red, so now it's blending too well. So I can change that border color to yellow. And it changed. And you can customize all of this. I'm not going to step through every single one of these, or we'd be here all day long. This guide that I've made will walk you through all of that. And it's important that you know that these areas with a color can either be the word or an HTML color code with a pound in front of it. So it's easier if you go to htmlcolorcodes.com, pick any range of color that you want, and then inside that color you can change the shading intensity. And it's like, oh, that's the color I'm looking for right there. Well, that's the code that you want to change. And there's the RGB code, the HSL code, depending on what you're dealing with, but we're dealing with hex codes right inside. So you can really get down to the nitty gritty of different shades of colors. Light cyan, powder blue, lemon chiffon. It's all here. But I wanted you to be aware of that. So one more item, we'll cover one more here. So the area of the table where the nodes that are connected are at, you wanna change that border table color and the background colors. We're gonna to go to table.gridtable.td. 
as you can see these are the same you have a border width of one pix one pixel padding of four pixels and i'm not exactly sure why i think it's padding inside the the cells i'm not sure but if you know css you know you're going to know what to do here i'm just kind of poking around here in the dark and stumbled across stumbled across some pretty cool stuff so let's change the border color to yellow and let's make that background color something a little dark maybe a little purpley plum crazy purple no space there and then save it upload it back to the node and refresh the page now that text inside that node is kind of hard to read because it's a very similar color okay so now if we want to change the color of these fonts inside the grid table since they're blue and the background is a purple they're really blending together we're going to come down to table.grid table with the font family defined here with the font size of 20 pix it's right now it's blue we could change that to yellow and if you wanted to make the font bigger i guess you could change this i'm not 100 percent sure that will actually change the font size but oh what the heck let's change it to 30 and see what happens well, we have to save that file first. Go back to the page and reload it. I don't think it actually changed the font size, but it did change the font color. You CSS uh, experts out there might be able to straighten me out on that. It would be nice to adjust this, but it may be bound to stay within a certain criteria, a certain tolerance of sizes. But you get the gist of this. Once you log in, all your buttons are centered. You can customize the background, you can customize the header, you can customize all this text and all of this text as well. It's all in the guide, so give it a chance. So there you go. You're on your way to customizing your Supermon 7.4 page to your own liking. Go forth and have fun with it. You can also go into the configuration editor under global.inc. I can come down here to digital dashboard and replace that URL with this URL. Write my edit, return to the index, close the window, refresh the page, and when I hit digital dashboard from now on, I'll get a pop-up window with my MMDVM in it. It's just kind of a neat little shortcut do with it as you will so there you have it folks customize your supermon 7.4 page this is the asl3 version i will try to do a video later on for the ham voip version just so everybody gets a little customization in their life there's a few people i'd like to acknowledge for this video the first being jeff k3jrz over at the k3jrz on the air youtube channel he's got a lot of great videos over there about poda and other stuff but he taught me a little CSS, along with Kevin, KQ4CCM, the Truck and Ham, over at the Truck and Ham YouTube channel. I'll link both of those guys in here. Both of them guided me into some of these files I just wasn't comfortable with at first touching. And with the confidence they instilled in me, I was able to pass some of this information on to all y'all. So without a community, we don't succeed. Together we are strong. So I just wanted to share those uh, acknowledgements with all of you. And thank you once again for your support for the Ham Radio Crusader YouTube channel. So what'd you think? Pretty neat stuff, right? I can't say this enough. Back up all your Supermon files just so you'll have something to go back to in case something doesn't go the way you want it to. You can always, uh, you know, go back to square one as it were. No big deal. Just try, try again. I want to thank you all for your continued support for this Ham Radio Crusader YouTube channel. I'm over 7,000 subscribers now and I've, I've got a goal this year to hit 10. I don't know that it will, but you and me together, we could do this thing, y'all. It's all about all of us working together for a common goal, whether it be All-Star or anything else amateur radio related because I got a lot of stuff on tap that's not just All-Star Link, but I love me some All-Star. <laughs> so I'd appreciate your support and you know, tell your friends and neighbors, I'd appreciate it. Hey, thanks. Hey folks, have a great day. This is Freddie Mac, your ham radio crusader saying 73 is wishing all the good signals to be yours and ham on y'all.